What's up, party people? It's your boy, Optimus Code. Welcome to the channel. Okay, so today we have part three of our interview with sound designer Larry Gates II. And in this video, we discuss voice acting and what it's like working with the voice actors. And if you stick around to the end of the video, you will have a much, much better understanding of how voice acting comes together and how everything is integrated into our favorite AAA video games. Okay, so the last time we left off discussing the radio stations and the DJs and the commercials and how all this stuff is mixed and handled and then put together into the radio stations in these big open world AAA video games. In this episode, like I said already, we're going to cover the voice acting, but before we get back to the interview, I want to say thank you for the support that y'all have shown so far. I usually save this stuff to the end but the channel has been getting a lot of love, a lot of support, and I appreciate it. And I hope y'all are learning and finding the videos useful. And if you are, go ahead and leave a like. If you enjoying the content, go ahead and subscribe. We got more coming for you. Okay, back to the interview. That goes into a complicated system that, get, that says for each station, we're gonna play so many songs, and then we're gonna play the guest DJ, and then we're gonna play a commercial, you know, all of that is driven by code too. And when we try to, um, make that feel as realistic as it possibly can. Man, that is so intricate. Okay, this is, man, I'm having a lot of fun with this interview, Larry. I appreciate the time. So we'll go to the questions now. So the the voice actors, what is it like working with the voice actors? Um, I told a couple of people that I was going to interview you as a sound designer. And one of the, or the biggest feedback that I got from the people that I told about this was what's it like working with the voice actors and they immediately i guess i really shouldn't mention any other studios but they immediately thought of this this famous woman in a post-apocalyptic world where her guardian was uh killed and she was on a revenge mission and it's like everybody just thinking about like what's it like to work with these actors uh -huh. and have them take over this role and the storytelling like what's that like it's uh, phenomenal i love 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 seeing the words come to life you know being involved in the process from first table reads to you know robot voice to i may even be reading those lines at some point in the game as placeholder and then we finally get to the point where it's uh it's an artist's job to take that a step further and i love it really is and this is true for any type of recording uh m music or on a film set or in a, a voiceover session is ultimately you're trying to capture lightning in a bottle you want to, mm -hmm. you're, I'm trying to document through this microphone into Pro Tools, uh, your best performance of that line right there in front of you. That's what we're after. And um, getting to do that um, and influence that and help that along and inform, you know, I'm the one feeding them the context. And, and those sessions, unless it's a, um, a cinematic session, we're doing cutscenes that are mm -hmm. more story driven. If it's through a mission, those sessions move very, very swiftly, very, yeah. very swiftly. We don't, we don't get to sit there and chew on every line of dialogue. Um, like it's Billy Shakespeare, you know, we gotta, we keep it moving, you know, for them to see it in cold read with whatever context or a line that I give them for them to spit it right back at me and say it in a way that none of us had even thought of and that's got us on the floor rolling you know because i love those moments and and um um I feel very fortunate to get to to participate um in them and you know that's grown for me too you know i went from the guy who was just shoveling voice to the guy who kind of took all the notes at the sessions to keep all the files straight um uh, to the guy who's who's casting and, and running the sessions and directing the actors um so wow, congrats. Uh, thank you thank you um um it's exciting and, and like i said i kind of carved out that space that's kind of felt like that's why you brought me here is to work on voice so let's work on voice you know let's let's make it the best we can that's um, big pimping right there sir uh, and and there's the other side of it too and the and this is no knock on on anything it's just that i think folks think that it's very glamorous and sometimes it is you have those moments but it can be a grind too you know when you're doing two or three weeks in a row of uh, four hours in the morning four hours in the afternoon of just kind of grunt conditional things you think of all the npcs in an open world game you know foot soldiers and pedestrians and whatever yeah. 
And you try to make them funny and you try to make, especially in a Saints Row world, you try to make them shine a a little bit, but they can't all be shine. You can't be surrounded by 12 Robin Williams at once going crazy. You know, we're trying to get your attention. Sometimes it's subtle and, um, you know, you're burning through two, 300 lines in these sessions day after day after day. You have to be wired for that too. You have to be wired for the, um, for the grind of, of getting through those. I think everybody thinks it's, it would be cool to be there and yeah, it would be, um, but, uh, you have to be a certain level of crazy to be able to lock in to script after script, after line, after line of these things, especially when it comes to world life, NPC life and, you know, grenade reloading all those you know the combat things that yeah yeah so repetitive you know you got to be ready for that as as well it does seem like it can be a grind so there's this thing i noticed this isn't one of the questions but i think it'll be quick there's this thing that i noticed where the motion capture talent is also the voice talent Mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be that way right like can you talk about that some right and and we don't do it that way there are two very distinct advantages and disadvantages well, one of each, right? Right up front is that the advantage of doing it that way is you don't have to marry anything. There's the performance is the performance and you're giving it to that actor wholeheartedly with with every fiber of their being so that any movement they give to the performance is there already. Uh, That's great when you can do it and when you have an actor that could do both. Um, Not everybody's is cut out for, you know, most of them come up through stage act, theater acting and whatever. Mm-hmm. Some of them do on camera and some of them do voice strictly, but not everybody does mocap. Um, and so the advantage would be you catch it all one and done. It's there. It's synced. Bam, you got it. And if you even do the facial capture, then your lip sync and all of that is done too. Um, the disadvantage to doing them at the same time, especially if there are multiple characters, is you're wearing the suits with all the sensors on them. And you're in the room with multiple people and you're moving around. That's an audio engineer's nightmare. You know, for Mike Bleed, oh, you're not gonna you're not gonna get anything clean. It's all gonna sound like trash. And so you could do it that way, but then you have to bring the actors in for a separate voiceover session to have them mimic their own lines to to get them captured clean. Uh, we do that. That process is called ADR. Um, if, if you were to say, I'm Optimus Code, you know, and that was the line that you made in the mocap session, but your sleeve went right in the middle of it. And we can hear that. I would line up that line with three beeps in front of it and it would just loop and you would mimic yourself. She, I'm Optimus Code. Beep, beep, beep. I'm Optimus Code. And we got a clean one that was the same exact emotion that you gave us in the oh, mocap. Oh, I have to recreate the exact moment that I did right. it the first time. Right. But with just with the intention of getting a clean voice recording this time. Right. right? Okay. And so it but that's added cost and a lot of added time, you know. So for us the 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 way we approach it is um is voice is king. So we get the the scripts approved and we go and we capture the voice performance first. And then that scene is assembled with its intended and enti- uh, intended timing. For each segment, at least, the intended back and forth. If we're having a conversation, whatever beats and pauses, laughters, interruptions are all there. And then the mocap actors will pantomime that and rehearse it mm. very, very okay. specifically. And okay. they'll get they'll often get beeps in front of their line. If I'm walking across the room and then I open a drawer and then I say a line, you know, I could walk across, open the drawer, beep, beep, beep. Hey, you, you know, whatever the line is. So they'll pantomime the whole thing. And that's where that footage is captured. Um, and then you build the scene in game and shoot it with all the, the, the cameras in game and the, the assets, the environments, the characters. And then it has a final stop. Um, we've used a place called Plastic Wax out of Australia um, that will do all the final facial animation to those voice lines. And that's a painstaking, long and expensive process as well. Um, so cutscenes are, you know, you're making a mini movie in there and you're making yeah. it the hardest way possible. You know, yeah. if, there, if it's a, a Western and they were to get a, a, a horse riding across a prairie, they get a person on a horse and they set up the camera and the right time of day, they shoot it going across the prairie. For us, we had to create that horse and that prairie and the physics logic that says when the horse hoof comes down, it doesn't fall through the world. You yeah, yeah. The dust that kicks up is VFA. You have to create every aspect of it building a ship in a bottle, you know, a piece at a time. Yeah. 
So, uh, so that's, you know, different strokes for different folks, and there's a, a thousand ways to go about it. But that's the order of prize. It's voice, then mocap, then then fa- then in-game really render, and then facial. But then it goes to the the uh, the sound design side, and we need the sound design to that entire scene and mu- music there if it needs to be, and then that gets into a um, a, a mix process um, where I've. You know, I've been with those cats uh we use warner brothers for uh a, a lot of our um outsourcing uh that's where we do all the voice recording and that's where we um uh mix those cinematics so okay cat named tom that uh that worked on the hunger games movies he mixes those sort of features you know he'll mix those scenes uh with us on a on the big sound stage um just like they would any any feature and so that's a long complicated expensive process as well i can imagine yeah. so there's there's been times i was like man you get lens and larry over we're gonna barbecue and i will call you and he's like man i'm in la for two weeks <laughs> and i will call you and he's like okay man um i'm having to go here for like a week i'm like this dude is never at home why do you travel so much well uh you know we the voice sessions once the production gets going really popping and and there, at least 2019, um, I was there almost every month. You know, you get out and you book a week or two at a time, and then you're doing 10 to 20 sessions. Um, and- so you go to where the actors are. You go to the Warner studio. Right. The actors don't come to your offices. You yeah. and your team go to where they are. Right. So that's where the talent pool is, um, especially when it comes to union talent. And once you... Um, once you start a project, once you register it with the actors union, SAG after the the actors union, then you are obligated to use union talent. So there's three pockets, technically four, five or six pockets of union talent. And the biggest one is Los Angeles. And of okay. course, there's New York. Chicago has a little. Um, then you have Atlanta and San Francisco, and oh, you can almost include a little bit of Austin, but LA is where that talent's going to be okay. and um and so pre-covid you know i would fly out there and we just knock it out you know and then i yeah. fly back and they would edit and deliver all those files to me but i'm still on the receiving end and get them in the game we hook them up we analyze them we change anything we need to change and go do it again okay that's it for this one y'all time for the quiz Okay, that's it. Time's up. Quiz over. Pencils down. How did y'all do? All right. Hopefully this one was easy peasy and I was able to answer all the questions successfully without any difficulties. Again, if you enjoying the content, go ahead and leave your boy a like on the video. Let us know that you're enjoying what you're viewing, that you're finding it useful and educational. If you are enjoying all of the content that you're getting from the channel, then go ahead and subscribe because we got way more coming for you. My friends and everyone that are helping me teach all these things, everyone is feeling encouraged by the support that y'all have shown so early in the channel's career. The channel has been alive for about two months now and y'all are really showing it love and we appreciate it. All right, we'll see y'all next time in the next video. Peace.